welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to do another video about why you need to use open source software. And we'll also talk a little bit today about why you need to stay off the cloud. Because this is kind of becoming a big deal in many instances where it's like people are putting everything on the cloud. We're getting so used to everything being on the cloud. And the problem is the cloud is somebody else's computer. And then the cloud also shares with it some issues in that Computers can be hacked. Computers can be breached. Whereas if I'm doing things in an offline setting with a local file, it's a whole lot harder to compromise that. It's not on the internet. It's not susceptible to a constant breach. And there are other fundamental things which make it a lot more difficult to get into. Of course, we talked in detail about LastPass and how pa LastPass was breached. They did get the, the vaults. They did get some cred stuffing. And basically, under some circumstances, if you're using LastPass, all of your passwords in there are potentially compromised. Well, today we're going to talk about a new scam that's been going out about uh, password managers. And this is a very, very convincing phishing scam utilizing what we've talked about in the past uh, on the news as your... Um, your uh, was it malware advertising campaigns? Uh, is is there a name for that yet? There probably is some pithy name like advertising campaigns or something. Who knows? But uh, this time they're not going for LastPass. They're like ah, we already got LastPass. Now let's go with one password because a lot of these companies shilling their affiliate links for these online password manager subscriptions. They're out there now saying, well, we got that one. Now let's everyone switch to one password. Well, it turns out that. That one's not going to be a real good option for you. So from Malwarebytes uh, this week, Google sponsored advertising uh, is ad malvertising is the keyword we're using now. Malvertising targets password manager. This is not last pass. This is one pass. Uh, one password. So um, they talked about, uh, and we talked in the news about uh, Google paid ads and utilizing these Google pay ads for uh, doing all these, um, these different uh, breaching and whatnot. So uh, these are the things we're talking about, but now we, uh, these guys doing research, looking for things, they found very convincing Google ads trying to fish for last uh, one password, excuse me, um, logins. I'm probably going to do that a number of times. Last pass is not mentioned in here, just one password. So what they found is doing a search for one password, they had some ads pop up and they end up seeing some real ads for one password. You can see the ad goes to www.onepassword.com. One password is all you need. One password. Stop remembering all your passwords and rely on one password. Try free today. Now they also found a fake one, which goes to start one password.com. Log in now. Password manager. One password remembers all your passwords for you to help keep account information. So looking at this, searching for it, they found two different sponsored advertisements. The first one is the legitimate one. The second one is not. Um, now they talk here a little bit about what Google said about ad ranking. As long as you get in here and do some good keyword stuff and make things look legitimate, you can point anybody to anything. Uh, I run a Google ad campaigns for some of my clients and, um, you know, it's really easy to get in here. And then the data that you see off it is very interesting as well. So uh, the next phase, if you click on that link and you head on over to uh, to the link, what they land on here is two pages that look absolutely legit. Let me see if I can make these guys bigger for us here. It looks like this is about as big as we can get it here. So this one goes to my.onepassword.com slash sign in, which is the real link. And the other one goes to myonepassword.com slash sign in, which is the fake link. They are omitting the dot before uh, or between the my and the one password. Now, up here, it gives us a little notice on this one. Your account requires a security key. Now, if you're already using one password, you know this. Now, if you've already logged in and have a trusted device, 
for the most part, you should not have to enter the secret key every single time. The problem is the way these online systems are working, they're trying to use smart technology and sometimes it will require you to use a random key and sometimes it just automatically detects you. Particularly if you're clearing your cookies, you're clearing your cache, you're clearing your browsing history, you might need to enter that security key every single time. So if you're a person who does that or just a person that simply recognizes that sometimes these sites require you to log in extra, um, whatever else, then you will be aware of this. Now, they're telling you exactly where you can find it. You can find it in your emergency kit. They're like, oh, I know where my emergency kit is. They go to their phone, grab the, uh, the secret key. And then these two pages look basically identical. identical. It is simply a phishing scam. They are getting your email, they're getting your password, they're getting your secret key, and then uh, there's the button for this is a public or shared computer, so it won't um, uh, keep the key in there. They don't have the trouble signing in link there, unless it's a little bit further down the page. But basically, once you fill this in, it is transmitting all of this data back to their servers. They do both have an SSL on them. So it's transmitted safely back to the hacker's domain. Isn't that wonderful? Nobody else can man in the middle of the stuff. The stuff goes directly from their malvertising site directly and securely into the scammers' computers. So now they have access to everything that they need to compromise this. All available through a Google ad. Isn't that wonderful? They talk here about the real difference is that secret key and the, the instances. Here's those. And so this raises these fundamental questions, okay? So first couple fundamental questions. The first is we need to stop putting major things like password managers on the internet. I know it's super convenient to have your account over here and download the app, blah, blah, blah. Guys, the average person does not have enough devices to have a problem if you have to change a password to change the password deployed across a couple devices. Secondly, Putting the devices in the cloud means that you're now reliant on their security, which the security models aren't good. What we learned from the LastPass breach is that they had all of the metadata insecured, okay? So all of the metadata was plain text. The only thing that was really encrypted was the passwords. So even if they didn't get into the vault and get your password lists, what they did end up getting is the metadata about all of the things that you're using. Now, I looked at a couple different free and open source online password managers. One of those is Bitwarden. Of course, everyone tries to talk about the Bitwarden. You know, hey, it's free and open source. I don't care if it's free and open source. It's still a password manager on the internet. I will not use Bitwarden for that reason. I don't care how false it is. There's another one I looked at called Passbolt. Passbolt actually seems to follow the LastPass model. Apparently, after reading all their documentation, the Passbolt site indicated that the metadata, like LastPass, is not encrypted. Just the passwords are. I think that uh, Bitwarden does encrypt all the metadata as well. I could be wrong about that, but still, I just don't want all of my passwords on an online database. And so uh, what we need to do is we need to stop relying on these services. We need to stop. Uh, and I guess this is the second factor. We need to stop clicking on ads, which means, yes, we shall be running ad blockers. Um, of course, I generate some of my income from the YouTube ads in front of the videos here, um, which, you know, OK, whatever else. But at the same time, guys, more malware is going to be spread through advertising than you possibly imagine. It's safer to not have the ads on your system, um, which is sad. I would love to be able to support creators with ads. And there are some creators I will turn it on and just be very cautious about what I'm doing. There's only been a couple of legitimate times I clicked legitimately on an ad to buy a product. Um, so if it's a product I'm looking for, um, you know, it's on, on a uh, creator site or something, I will click on it. Of course, because they've gotten so malicious throughout time and so in your face, it kind of forced me to start using an ad blocker to not steal all my bandwidth and to uh, not put pushy stuff in front of my face perpetually. So if the website operators would tone it down a little bit, I might be willing to turn that thing off a little bit more. Now, all this being said, uh, we want to look at other solutions. Instead of utilizing a cloud-based password manager, what we should instead do is, my preferred is KeePass XC. 
So the KeePass XC is an offline password manager as a super encrypted uh, file, two, uh, 256-bit AES encryption. Um, you can use this with security keys. You can use it with key files. You can use it with UB keys. You can use it with complicated passwords. But everything stays on a local file. It's not stored on the Internet in some massive database of hundreds of other people's master password lists, which is a huge, huge target. Okay, just think of the data. If somebody went through that uh, that um, one password link and clicked on it and gave up all their information, every single thing in your password manager is now completely compromised. And they can get in there and then just start changing your, your stuff. They can change your password. I assume they can probably change their secret key. Uh, I assume that when you get, you can log in there and be like, oh, I think my secret key's been compromised and change it. I'm pretty sure you can probably do that. So now you have completely breached that. So with the KeePass XC, you have an offline system and then you can deploy this file where you need it. You can keep a master backup of it in your offline archives and then you can use this in order to access your different devices. Now, I don't generally log into anything on my phone, so I don't really have a need for having a phone app, but you can get some. I actually did have somebody commented on one of my KeePass videos saying, well, the app I was using stop working anymore. KeePass sucks. Change apps. Okay, just doing a quick search for KeePass on FDroid gets us, what is this, about 10-ish or so different KeePass um, compatible password managers. Sure, there might be one that goes defunct, they stop developing, switch to one of the other ones. There's a lot of them out there. And so you can use these. They also have a browser extension, so if you want passwords on a browser, it's a lot safer to do that than it is to store your passwords in the browser. Of course, when you go to the download page, they do have a KeePass XC version for Mac for Windows. You can see the source code. If you like snaps, you can grab the official snap. You can grab an app image. You can grab a flat pack. Uh, then they have PPAs and how to install it from a variety of different distros. Of course, the Windows, um, they have a portable one. They have the installer. They have a legacy installer, a legacy 32. They have third-party distributions through Chocolatey and the Windows Package Manager. So there are a lot of options inside of here. Here's your Intel version of, of Mac. Here's your silicone version of Mac. Uh, here's your homebrew cask. So there's a lot of different options that you have. And this is a much safer alternative. Now, you, you, you lose a little bit of convenience in the process. That's fine. Security and privacy means losing a little bit of secure uh, a little bit of of convenience but as we are losing such convenience we have to recognize how much safer we are going to be because i don't have to worry about did i click the wrong link did i click into a phishing email did i get malware installed or by some you know some random non action on my part did some hacker get in there you'll remember the last pass breach happened with a social engineering attack on a company employee that's all it took. And that type of thing could happen to one password as well. It could happen to all of the online password managers. We do not need to be putting our password managers on the internet. Please use KeePass XC for your password managers. I have videos and tutorials about how to set it up, how to use the browser extensions and things like that. If it looks like they need to be uh, updated, I will go ahead and update those. I've done those uh, not too long ago, so they should still be completely up to date. Uh, but KeePass XC is going to be your solution. Do not buy these subscription-based ones. Do not buy an online password manager. Do not connect your passwords to anything on the internet. Do not do that. So this is just a uh, friendly reminder. Um, these scammers are going to use whatever means necessary to get into this data. And you can highly secure this by using an offline system where some company... A uh, bad actor can't get in there. Some company dumb actor can't let somebody else get in there. And, you know, some company, um, you know, some company can't hire some stupid third party contractor, which, you know, leaks the entire thing out on the Internet through some, you know, S3 colander. So with that being said, guys, uh, definitely it is time to abandon all online pass managers. Yes, that even means the open source, amazing open source Bitwarden. No, thank you. It is a password manager on the Internet. This is one of those cases. I don't care if it's, if it's open source. Don't trust it. 
I do not want passwords on the internet. So uh, there is my take. Let me know your thoughts about these down the road, uh, down there in the comments there. And uh, also let me know the um, uh, what systems you use and which one of these apps you might use that is available on an Android or an iPhone so that uh, those people who do have a need for having the password manager on their device can uh, have some direction as to where to go because I don't log into stuff on my phone. Are you crazy? <laughs> we'll leave this one here for now. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.